guys, welcome back to Geek and Plunder. Lately I've been on a bit of a nostalgia trip. Like I did that video on the Ghostbusters Lego set, uh, last video was a Tamagotchi, a toy from the 90s. And today I'm going back even further than the 90s. I'm going to the 80s. I have a collectible right here from a series of movies that I just adore. Like every few years I just get out the DVD box and watch all of them. The funny thing is that yesterday they were showing the second movie in the series on Belgian television. That was a weird coincidence. Incidents. I'll be watching the movies at the end of the week on my discord, but I'll tell you more about that in a minute First let me show off the object. It is this Dr. Collector's case of um, Back to the Future props. It is called time travel memories. It is a beautiful tin box With a bit of a relief on there like all these objects stick out a little bit and on the bottom you have these um, kind of 3d reflective pieces in there that actually change the numbers a little bit I really love those kind of effects. They used to have them in postcards back in the day. It's quite hefty, not that big. And it's made by Dr. Collector. This is the first item I've ever gotten from Dr. Collector and I'm extremely curious. The description on the back, how could 18 days have passed for Marty McFly between October 25 and 27, 1985? This is the madness of time travel. This box contains memories that Marty collected during his time travels to 1955, 2015, 1885 and to a parallel 1985. Reminding him that his time adventure with Doc was real. And it's actually made in Spain. That's interesting. Let's open it up. So yeah, like I said, it's a tin box. Like the cookie jars or the cookie boxes that uh, they still make, I think. And it has a bit of a relief to it. Oh. The first item is some kind of foam. It looks like a placeholder, like something was in there. And judging by the shape, it has something to do with the flux capacitor. But I have no idea what it is specifically. Let's move on. Oh, this is kind of cool. So if you've seen the movies, you know in the first movie that Marty has a picture in his pocket that shows himself at a well with his brother and his sister, Dave and Linda. Now as things go wrong, his sister and brother disappear from the picture. So it's basically a kind of an indicator on how well he's doing. We're trying to fix the timeline. And this is that same picture. Now you can see Marty at the well, but if I start flipping it, you can see his sister and brother appearing and disappearing. Again, that 3D effect that we used to have in postcards back in the 80s and that all baffled us because it was so impressive. But this is really cool. All right, next up is a letter, Dear Dave and Linda. From what I can tell, it's a letter that Marty wrote to kind of um, as an introduction to everything in here, basically telling them that everything is okay, that he traveled back and forth into the past and future to basically save all of their lives and to make sure that Biff is not their stepdad. A handwritten letter, not really, but so you can see that it says, Dear Dave and Linda, and then it's signed in the back, your brother. I've seen this number plate so many times. It's the number plate that is on the DeLorean, which is the time machine. I've seen a documentary about how they made the movies and it is quite an interesting story. Like they made the whole movie with a different actor that played Marty. Michael J. Fox was actually the first choice, but he was uh, stuck recording a series that was really popular back in the day. Yeah, the other guy, can't remember his name right now. It didn't really work. He didn't fit the character. And let's be honest, Michael J. Fox is Marty. He's the perfect actor to play that role. Now anyways, one thing I also learned in that documentary is that the time machine originally was not going to be a car. If I remember correctly, it was some type of fridge or something, I don't know. But then they ended up with the car and this is the license plate that is on the car at a time. Anybody that's seen the movies recognizes this number plate instantly. Damn, this is nice. Look at this bag. When Marty in the second movie travels to the future to 2015, which is the past for us, this is getting complicated, there is a shop that sells old magazine stuff from in the past, which for Marty was the present. And that shop was called Blast from the Past. Now this is the plastic bag and in that bag in the movie was an almanac, a magazine that basically listed all the sports results between 1950 and 2000. I'll explain more about that later, but this is the bag. So I'm going to open this one up first. Quite a lot in there. I love this effect on this bag. It reminds me of Marty's hat and it has that kind of same shine to it. Okay, let me start out with this. Looks like a page that is torn from a magazine. Like, okay, we're in the future, but they're still reading paper magazines. That did not happen. But it is an advert from a magazine for the hoover board. It comes with handles. 
Now in the back are the other hoover boards that are being used by the villains. Okay, which one am I going to show next? Mr. Fusion sticker. Now, Mr. Fusion is basically the power source for the time machine. In the original movie, they used uh, uranium or plutonium. I don't remember, but it's something radioactive. But in the second movie, Doc comes back from the future and he has figured out a way to make the uh, time machine work with garbage, basically. So he opens up a garbage bin, takes some banana peels, throws them in the Mr. Fusion and bam. Oh, this is nice. This is a map of Hill Valley, which is the little town that the whole movie is set in. It is, it's a 3D map, so it has some real depth to it. So the courthouse is on there with the clock. There was this um, 3D holographic shark, and basically it's the whole town, it's kind of neat. In the back is the floating sign for Hill Valley. This is a fax that uh, basically tells Marty in the future, not the Marty from the past that travels to the future, but the actual Marty from the future, the older Marty that he's fired. In every single Back to the Future movie, there's some kind of diner. And in the future, that is called Cafe 80s. And it has this retro design. On the other side, there's a burger that they're selling with fresh lettuce. A taste of the 80s Tower of Love. This is the Tower of Love. More than a burger, it's the Tower of Love. I think it's the Tower of a Heart Attack, but... Now, that same uh, diner also has a coaster that is in here that has the same 3D effect. It's just a logo that appears and disappears. Now, like I said, this plastic bag was for a store called Blast From The Past where they sold memorabilia, old stuff, stuff from the 80s and before. And one of the things they sold was the almanac that had all the sports results from 1950s to 2000. If you've not seen the movie, spoiler alert, Marty has this idea to buy the almanac, go back in time and get filthy rich. But Doc tells him, you can't do that, you'll break the timeline, you'll kind of mess up time. So he's like, alright. But old Biff, he hears Marty talking about this and he actually gets the almanac. He jumps into the time machine, goes back to the 1950s, gives the uh, almanac to his younger self and then that's basically the whole second movie. One nice item that is in here is the receipt for that magazine, that almanac from that future shop. And it looks so awesome. An exact copy from the one in the movie because I saw it yesterday. Transparent plastic. All right, looking back at that, plastic. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to stick with paper. It has a barcode, the, the name of the shop, and the almanac. Gray's almanac, and it cost 29 bucks. It was about $3 in, uh, in tax, so a total of 32 bucks. It's not that overpriced. This is the 1985 bag. The bag itself is from Twin Pines Mall. Twin Pines Mall is where the first part of this first movie starts out. Where um, basically the terrorists come to attack Doc and Marty gets in the car and he gets away and he ends up in the past. There's one small detail that not a lot of people notice. In the second movie, he ends up at that same place again. He ends up in 1985 at Twin Pines Mall where Doc is again getting attacked. But it's an alternate timeline. And in the past, Marty had run over a pine tree. In that alternate timeline, it is not called Twin Pines Mall, but Lone Pines Mall. There's a lot of these small things in the movie. That's why I love them so much that uh, not a lot of people notice. Let me get into the first item while we're talking about this. Like I just said, in the mall, or outside of the mall, it's actually on the parking lot. Dog gets attacked by terrorists and he ends up getting killed. When Marty goes back to the past, he writes this letter which is uh, written on Louis Cafe's paper and, 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 and on actually an envelope. I didn't know that cafes or diners at least had, had their own stationery. But it says on the front, do not open till 1985. And his plan was to put it in the pocket of Doc and to kind of warn him that's what is in the letter, that he'll get attacked and that he will get killed. And basically telling him like, be careful, take the necessary measures and make sure you survive because you're my friend. That's what it says in this letter. This is a business card for Doc. All right, there we go. Oh, nice. Art and Revolution. I read about this. This is a pin that Marty is wearing in the original timeline. It was uh, an art exhibit in Soviet Russia or something. But let me see if I can get it to focus on it. It's just a pin in that typical 80s style Art and Revolution. In the 1950s, when Marty travels back, lightning strikes the, the clock and the clock stops. And in 1985, they're trying to save the clock. And uh, people are handing out these flyers. There was also um, a ribbon pin. And what is interesting about the flyer is actually on the back. His girlfriend Jennifer wrote this message for him with a, with a phone number. Isn't that beautiful? That's a nice detail. So we had the 3D map for the um, 
the future version of Hill Valley. This is the map for the current version or the 80, 1985 version of uh, Hill Valley. Again, with the courthouse and the clock. It's basically the same town, but then in 1985. On the back, you can see an advertisement for the Twin Pine Mall. This is... So this is a, an absence or tardy slip. We don't have those in Europe. But Marty gets caught in the hallway by the principal, which is uh, Strick, Strickland. He's the bald guy, the small guy, like the always angry. It says Marty McFly was tardy, reason, slacker. Then there's a, a pin, an election pin. Re-elect Mayor Goldie Wilson. Goldie Wilson, sorry, Goldie Wilson. This is a bookmark that uh, advertises Marty's dad. As you can see, it's the uh, the older version of George McFly, Marty's dad. And he, he wrote a book. And if you look down here at the picture, the illustration, you can tell what the whole book is going to be based off. If you've seen the movie, you recognize the orange suit, a match made in space. It's a bestseller, the most exciting book of the year. So this is from the um, rectified 1985 timeline. I know it's complicated. One thing that definitely is from the alternate timeline is this. This is a chip from Biff's casino. So when Biff receives the almanac, he puts in some really good bets, becomes filthy rich, and he uh, basically turns the whole little town to uh, some kind of Vegas. And in the front is the name of the casino, which is Biff Tanner's Pleasure Paradise. This is a Hill Valley High School envelope, 9055. So I told you about the um, the letter that Marty wrote for Doc that was on the stationery of Lou's Cafe, the diner. Well, this is actually the menu for Lou's diner. And then you have Lou himself. It resembles the actor really well. It's a nice, nicely done drawing. And the items on the menu. It's a, a little small, but a hamburger was 25 cents back in the 1950s. Damn. There's another version of the map, now the 1955 version, again with the courthouse and the clock. And then there's um, a, an advertisement for Lion Estates, which is a new neighborhood that they're building and where Marty and his family will end up living in 1985. But it hasn't been built in 1955 and they're selling houses for that estate um, in this map advertisement. This is a little flyer. During the first movie, there's this dance. I don't think it's the prom, but it's a school dance and it's called Enchantment Under the Sea Dance. That's where Marty plays guitar on stage and basically his mom and dad kind of find each other. I love the style. This would still work today. Yeah, and during that dance, this picture is taken of, um, of uh, Marty's mom and dad, so George and Lorraine. And there's a, a different picture uh, of Lorraine. Basically, it's like the girlfriend picture, the one that you put in your wallet, you know, when you were younger. Uh, there's also a, a schematic for the uh, flux capacitor, probably drawn up at Doc. Well, definitely drawn up at Doc. All right, and the last envelope is um, from the Hill Valley Telegraph, which is AT&T back in the day, I guess. The whole third movie is actually set in the 1800s. It shows a lot of the, uh, the foundations of Hill Valley and the people that we've known from the other movies, like the, like the ancestors. So as we had the picture for Marty and his brother and sister in the first movie and the third movie, there's this picture that shows the uh, tombstone for Emmett, which is basically Doc Brown. Um, and the whole storyline is about him getting killed again, or not getting killed. Now the person that wants to kill him is this guy, a wonder poster for Buford Mad Dog Tenet, which is, of course, Biff's ancestor. You can tell by the uh, the beautiful mug picture. They had a reward of 5,000 bucks. Do you know how many hamburgers you can get for that in the 1950s? By order of Hill Valley's Chief Marshal, James Strickland. There he is. Little bald guy that was the uh, principal in the 1950s and the 1980s is the, uh, is the marshal. This is again, as we've had in any time zone, a map of the town. And as you can tell, but right here, they're still building the courthouse that will have the clock and basically start off the whole story. The final piece is rather big. I don't think I'm going to be able to fit it all in the frame. It's basically the plan that Doc wrote up to get back to 1985. 
they were going to put the time machine, the DeLorean, on a track in front of, um, of a train and then push it till it got to the optimal speed, which was, I don't remember. Uh, but they need to reach a certain speed to kind of set off the uh, time machine. And that way, travel back to 1985. Now you need to watch the movie to find out if they did. But that's it. That was a lot of goodies. I'm extremely impressed by this box. If you are a Back to the Future fan yourself, I think you need to get this. There's a lot of props out there, Back to the Future props, ranging from small DeLoreans to key change that uh, the uh, flux capacitor to whatever you want. But these are kind of so specific. Like the most common one I've found in here is maybe the license plate. That is something you can find pretty easy. There's a lot of other stuff in here that I've rarely seen in other sets. The things that you don't think of immediately when people tell you Back to the Future, but once you see them, they ring a bell and they bring back all of the story, which in my opinion are the best pieces. I don't remember what I paid for it. I bought it like a few weeks back. It wasn't that expensive to be honest, especially taking into account like everything that is in there. Now, as I said, I'm going to be watching the movies next Friday on my Discord. I'll put a link to my Discord below. Come join us if you want to. There's an event on the Discord that explains the time and how it all works. Besides that, there's something else I wanted to share with you guys. We're going to start doing a podcast that kind of ties into these videos. And I'm going to do this podcast with my girlfriend. We're kind of from a different age, but still we have a lot of common. It's going to be interesting to discuss a lot of geeky stuff from our different viewpoints. Uh, make sure to follow Geek and Plunder on Instagram and Twitter because as soon as the first episode comes out, I'll notify you guys on there. Hope you guys check it out. Um, and that's it. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back with a new video in two weeks. Till then, make sure to take care of yourself, take care of each other. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.